Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced the notion of a line integral for scalar fields. This is where we take a multivariable function, z equals f of x, y, and we integrate it not over a 2D region, but over a curve in its domain. We saw an example of how to evaluate these line integrals last time, and I have a couple more for you today. So let's begin by finding this line integral, the integral of root 1 plus 4y ds along the curve c. Now c here is the arc of the parabola y equals x squared from the point 1, 1 to 2, 4, followed by the straight line segment from 2, 4 to 6, 4. All right, there's lots going on here, so why don't we start by drawing out this path c? That should give us an idea of what's taking place. C consists of the arc of the parabola y equals x squared, which might look something like this, but we're only concerned with the part between 1, 1 and 2, 4. So this is the first part of our path C. Next, we're supposed to move in a straight line from 2, 4 all the way to 6, 4. Might look something like this. Now, if you'll recall from the last lesson, we evaluate these line integrals by first parametrizing the curve C. But look at this thing. I don't want to have to parametrize this all at once, so instead I'm going to split this into two integrals. I'm going to first integrate along C1, this parabolic arc. That's going to give me the area of the curtain below my graph and above C1. Next, I'm going to integrate along this line segment, which maybe I'll call C2. That's going to give me the area of the curtain below my graph and above the line segment. To find the total area of this curtain over the curve C, well, I can just add the results. So my line integral is going to be the integral along C1 plus the integral along C2. All right, we're going to compute the line integrals along C1 and C2 separately, starting with C1. To do this, we're going to need a parametrization of our curve, y equals x squared. At this point, it might be a good idea to revisit our lessons on parametric equations to remind yourself of some of the common parametrizations we see in practice. One of the easiest is when dealing with a function, y equals f of x, because here the curve is pretty much already parametrized. If we let x be t and y be f of t, and let t range between the possible x values, that will give us a parametrization of our curve. So here we can let x be t, y be t squared, and you can see that x is going to range between 1 and 2. So t is going from 1 to 2, and this is a parametrization for c1. Okay, to compute our line integral, we replace the bounds with the bounds on t, 1 to 2. We replace our variables x and y using the descriptions in r of t. So here we're going to have the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, and lastly, we replace ds with that big ugly square root, the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared dt. Now, if you don't want to write this big ugly thing out every single time, you can write it more compactly as the norm of the vector r prime t. After all, we're taking the derivatives of these entries, squaring them, adding up, and taking the square root. So what we have is the integral from 1 to 2 of the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. The derivative of x with respect to t is just 1, so I have the square root of 1 squared, plus the derivative of y with respect to t is 2t, so I have 2t squared dt. Now if you simplify this expression in the square root, you're exactly going to get 1 plus 4t squared. So our integral should simplify to the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 plus 4t squared dt, and I think you can probably evaluate this from here. We should get a final answer of 31 over 27. All right, next up is the line integral along c2, the straight line segment from 2, 4 to 6, 4. Well, when parametrizing straight line segments, there's a little trick. You can always parametrize them as t times the terminal point, in this case 6, 4, plus 1 minus t times the initial point, in this case 2, 4. This is going to simplify to 2 plus 4t, 4, and when parametrizing in this way, you always take t between 0 and 1. You can see that when t is 0, we really are going to get our initial point, 2, 4, and when t is 1, we really are going to get our terminal point, 6, 4. 
Again, this only works for straight line segments. Okay, well this means that our line integral along C2 can be written as the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus 4y, of course here y is constantly 4, times, well, that nasty square root, which this time I'm going to write more compactly as the norm of r prime t dt. Saves me a bit of writing here. Now we can actually compute this quantity separately if we want. We can calculate r prime t from the description above. That's going to be 4, 0, and you can see here this is a vector of norm 4. So our integral simplifies to the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 17 times 4 dt. And at this point, it's quite easy to evaluate. We simply have 4 root 17. Putting it all together, we get that the line integral along c of root 1 plus 4y ds is going to be the line integral along c1 of root 1 plus 4y ds plus the line integral along c2 of root 1 plus 4y ds. That gives us a final answer of 31 over 27 plus 4 root 17. We aren't restricted to just functions of two variables when computing line integrals. We have formulas that will work in higher dimensions as well. So suppose that we have a function of three variables, f that depends on x, y, and z, and we want to integrate that function along some curved line living in its domain. Well, we don't really have a geometric intuition for this because the graph of our function lives in four dimensions, and so we can't really think about this as an area of a curtain, but we can easily extend our definition from functions of two variables in a very natural way. We begin by parametrizing the curve, just like we did before, with t values ranging between a and b. If we can do that, then we define our line integral to be the integral from a to b of f, with x, y, and z expressed as functions of t, and then we multiply by the norm of r prime dt. It's exactly the same process, except we have a third variable to worry about. Let's check out a quick example to wrap up this video. Okay, let's see if we can evaluate this line integral of a function of three variables. Here, we're integrating x, y plus z with respect to arc length along this curve c. c is the straight line segment from 1, 1, 0 to 2, 0, 2. Ah, since we're working with a straight line segment, we can use our trick from the last example. We can parametrize the curve c using the vector function r of t, given by t times the terminal point, that's t times 2, 0, 2, plus 1 minus t times the initial point, 1, 1, 0. When you simplify, you'll be left with 1 plus t, 1 minus t, 2t, with t going between 0 and 1. Okay, this means that our line integral over c of x, y plus z, ds, is really the integral from 0 to 1, I'm going to rewrite x, y, and z in terms of the entries of r of t to get 1 plus t, 1 minus t, plus 2t, and then the remaining part of the integral, that nasty square root, I'm again going to write simply as the norm of r prime t dt. Now we can compute r prime using the definition of r. We find that r prime of t is simply 1 minus 1, 2, and this is a vector of norm root 6. So my integral becomes root 6 times the integral from 0 to 1 of, if I expand this, I get 1 minus t squared plus 2t dt. Now from here, I know you can fill in the details. You should get a final answer of 5 root 6 over 3.